The continuous voter registration exercise ahead of Nigeria's next general elections has been officially suspended. But can it be deemed a success? Is there a need for a further extension? We seek answers to these and other questions on the breakfast this morning. And Nigeria's anti-trafficking watchdog is asking football agents to obtain a clearance certificate before embarking on foreign trips with Nigerian footballers. We'll unpack this ahead on the program. And we have in-depth analysis of today's news super headlines. All these on The Breakfast. Welcome. It's another brand new week and of course another time to talk about the important things that matter to you right here on Plus TV Africa. We're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Butas. We have interesting analysis of uh, topics earlier advertised. But as usual, we start with a look at the top trending stories on Nigeria's social space. Um, quite interesting discussions over the weekend and uh, of course the first one that we have up for you happens to be um, the Commonwealth Games. Yes, indeed, uh, Nigerians have been uh, have not yet recovered uh, from the legs here. The sweetness of uh, the victory of the likes of Ace Brume and Tobia Musa at the World Athletic Ch Athletics Championships in Oregon, the United States of America, uh, and now there's more to jubilate and more to celebrate as well as far as um, uh, winning medals at, at, in athletics and other sports uh, are concerned. This time, the Commonwealth Games uh, holding in the British uh, United Kingdom city of Birmingham. And of course, um, countries around the Commonwealth, former colonies, former colonies of the United Kingdom, the British um, Empire, are the ones that make up the Commonwealth these are the ones who are gathering in Birmingham, the United Kingdom, uh, to have these games. As you can see on your screen, the Nigerian contingent there. Um, the first gold medal uh, was won by a Nigerian Adenike, or Larry Noe Adenike Adijat, on Saturday evening. Uh, a combined lift of 203 GR in the weightlifting category, women's 55 kg. Um, of course, she stood on the podium, and we have the Nigerian national anthem blaring right there through the speakers in Birmingham with the Nigerian flag on top. It was another sight to behold. These are the things that give you pride to be a Nigerian. Now, the Commonwealth Games has also recorded a second medal for Nigeria. Yes, indeed, a second medal. This time, weightlifter Ididium Joseph Umo Umafia uh, clinched the bronze medal in the men's 67 kg category uh, on Saturday, in the 67 kg category on Sunday. Yeah, so one gold medal on Saturday and a bronze medal on Sunday. Fantastic news. Um, you can see the wonderful lady uh, we speak, spoke earlier about, uh, Adijat, standing there on the podium, the first the first gold medal for Nigeria in the Commonwealth Games this time around. Congratulations to her. And of course, a young man who also won a bronze medal as well. Fantastic news. You know, the nation needs these stories. These are the heroes. Um, when they say the labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. You know, these are the heroes that we can look up to. These are the ones who give everything for the country. Um, not the ones who steal your money. Those are not your heroes. Not the ones who, who oppress you. Those are not your heroes. These are the ones to see. Of course, you have uh, those uh, power athletes as well who have been doing Nigeria proud and uh, will continue to bring you information on this as we proceed with the Commonwealth Games. Fantastic news. Let's move on to the next uh, trending story. Uh, the Inspector General of the Nigerian Police, Osman Baba, is speaking again. And some very, very, very important and interesting uh, conversations on social space we've monitored. Um, he has ordered the arrest and prosecution of skit makers. You know, these young uh, people uh, who are talented in comedy, they get a camera, get a phone, they film themselves. And of course, uh, they put it on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. These are comedy sketches. And um, we call those skits. We call those skits. Indeed, um, he says uh, anyone who uh, uses a police uniform 
in a skate. You can see Brother Shaggy, who is used to uh, doing this with Officer Woos. I mean, he's one of those who likes to wear a police uniform. Anyone, now, Brother Shaggy stands to be arrested if he uses this police uniform without approval. Also, movie makers who use the police uniform without police approval will be arrested. The order was contained in a statement issued on Sunday uh, by the first public relations officer, Lumuiwa Adejobi. Uh, in that statement, they decried the illegal sale of police materials uh, by traders in shops, open stores, not approved or recognized by authority. And um, I'm sure that they are looking at uh, uh, the security implications of all uh, of this. The statement by the police inspector a general uh, says that um, the meaning manner in which movie makers and skit makers portray the police institution uh, in their movies and skits using the police uniform without recourse to the provisions of uh, section 251 of the criminal code and section 133 of the penal code which criminalize uh, such unauthorized use with accompanying necessary sanctions so i'm sure he's not just concerned about you know, the, the, the wearing of the uniform. But you can see there's something uh, emotional there coming from the IGP. Uh, he is talking about the way movie makers and skit makers, you know, portray the police institution in their movies and skits. Says the way, uh, the demeaning manner, he says, the demeaning manner. I mean, if I ask you who's watching us right now and listening to us, um, uh, what comes to mind? immediately think about the Nigerian police. I'm sure uh, you say, <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't want to go into anything right now, so I won't be part of those who are demeaning the police. But um, if I ask you what comes to mind when you just think about the Nigerian police force, what would you say? What would you say? You know, so the, the, the skit makers, some would argue, you know, the movie makers are simply portraying what's happening in society and giving Nigerians a... Uh, a way to just laugh off the stress, you know. If there's stress coming from the police, just make you laugh about it. You understand? Someone said, you know, instead of giving yourself, uh, you know, a high pressure, high blood pressure about issues, laugh about the serious things so that you, you lower your blood pressure in this country. So, you know, when you think about the police, someone say you think about bribery, you think about corruption, you think about a collection of bail when bail is free, like they always say, you know, cars being stopped on the road, stop and search, and all that, you know, uh, uh, harassment of, of, of young people on the road. I mean, they'll stop you on the street and ask you, okay, you are too young to have such a car. How did you, uh, how, how, did you how were you able to afford this car? I mean, these are, these are questions that you shouldn't be asked. I personally have been asked by police, but, you know, many years ago, young man, this car, he sure is your own. Um, how did you afford it? So I'm supposed to explain to the policeman how I was able to afford a car. I mean, I have a job and I'm paid a salary and I bought a car and you're asking me on the, on the road how I was able to afford. You know, so these are some of the things you face in the country. I mean, a lot of people face these every day. So these movie makers, these uh, comics who make the sketches we call skits, they just look for a way uh, to make people laugh, you know, about the the hard things in the country, you know, it's um, it's parody, it's it's a satire, you know, call it what you may. But if it comes to the security implications of anyone being able to get a uniform uh, or clearance, then I'm sure we can understand. But I'm sure these people will go around, they find a way around it. They can wear anything, you know, they can wear anything. For me, what I think is this: for uh, the police, first of all, they have to get their acts right. The first thing they need to do is to have a uniform. IGP, have your men a uniform. All right? Let them have a uniform. What is the uniform of the Nigeria police force as we speak? What is the uniform? If we did a random gathering of 10 or 5 police officers from the same unit, of the same cadre, from the same uh, uh, command, all right, um, or division, let's call it that, division of the same cadre, I'm sure that you would find five different shades of, of uniform, five different colors of uniform. Let's just say you carry, you take five mobile police officers, 
of the same killer. You see some wearing black, black. You see some wearing helmet. Some will wear beret. Some will wear long boots. Some will wear normal shoe. All right? Some will wear camouflage. Even the camouflage, you have different shades. You know, those who wear black, uh, mobile police, uh, black and green, the green khaki, some looks more greener than the other. Some look brown. You know, some you look a bit turning towards yellow. Some look a bit turning towards lemon. So, so the police also has a responsibility because the IGP is talking about the security here. And of course, we understand, I personally understand the fact, you know, that, you know, you know not anyone should, should not just be able to walk into a shop and buy something that looks like a police uniform. But what will help the situation? Because since this is a conversation we're having about security implications of police uniforms being everywhere, it's we as a people also would like to see the police having one uniform. All right? Having one uniform. Otherwise, anyone can just start up wear black, black and put a red something with a wing somewhere there and say it's a policeman. You know, personally, I've been stopped by fake officer. Yeah, fake. I've been stopped by fake. He got into my car and he started demanding my papers. And I said, okay, let's drive. I'm driving to a police station. Let's go there and then we'll continue the conversation there. He said, the, the red flag for me was he said he was a, a major. He was a police officer and he was a major. And I was like, <laughs> Does the police have major? You know, they don't have that. So I, I, I smelled a fish and I said, okay, let's drive. And he started begging me. You know, after begging me, he said, uh, anything for me, just find me something, make I go. You know, so people do not know what exactly they for me. Some guys who stand on this road, you know, to control the traffic, you think they're policemen. They are not. They need to have a defined code of dressing. All right? They need to have a defined code of dressing. I mean, the IGP is the same IGP who introduced the wearing of hijab by a female policewoman. So I'm sure that he has all it takes to, to, to be firm in this, in this request for a dress code in terms of the color. And, and, and I mean, let, let them have, even the camouflage, you see different you know, shades. It's very important. And I mean, it's wrong for anyone to sell uniforms of the police in the shops, in the market, that's wrong. All right, so it's very important that people should be uh, aware of this. Um, I'm sure the IGP is, is saying this because of the security implications. But as to how they are portrayed, um, Ogai IGP, please, don't, don't take it personal, all right? Don't take it personal. These guys are just talented. It's parody, it's satire. They take serious things about society and make us laugh about them. There's nothing, nothing demeaning about that. If your officers want this to stop, they need to stop collecting money from people on the road. They need to stop harassing Nigerians and they need to do their job, you know, with patriotism. Just like you, Miss IGP, I'm sure you've been doing all these years and that's why you've ascended to this position of Inspector General of Police. All right, let's move on to another one. Um, some very sad news um, uh, broke over the weekend. The, the kidnap of two Nigerian uh, filmmakers uh, you can call them Nollywood stars. Cynthia Okereke, very sad. Uh, Clemson, Clemson Cornell, a.k.a. Agbogidi, um, they've been kidnapped. And uh, the, the chairman or the national president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, I personally think he shouldn't be talking. And this matter, because the more he talks, the more people say, oh, ah, people there, where you go give us money? Actors Guild of Nigeria. Ah, no, we need to up the money. You know, but he's been talking. The president, the national president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, Emeka Rollers, um, has been speaking to the media. He said that the um, kidnappers are demanding $100,000 in ransom. Now, this is the same uh, national president of the Actors Guild, Guild of Nigeria who said the guild does not have any money to pay for that ransom. That is not their place to pay for the ransom. They will do all they can to make sure that uh, they support the police in, 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 in doing the investigation, conducting the investigation to know, uh, you know where they are and all that. Initially, what the Actors Guild of Nigeria president said was that they were not sure it was a kidnap. Uh, but now the kidnappers have made uh, contact with the family and uh, uh, asking or demanding for the sum of $100,000. Um, so if the Actors Guild of Nigeria can't pay this money, I think, I think it's time for... Um, the national president, Emeka Rola, said, Emeka, please, the more you talk, the more you get into the news, the more these kidnappers will feel that um, 
these two actors are actually getting attention. And I mean, Actors Guild of Nigeria is big. It's it's the entire the umbrella body for all actors in Nigeria. And you know, not all actors are rich. You know, I mean, at least you have I can count ten who are rich. You know, I don't I don't know their back balances, but hey, they they have money. You know, so this these kidnappers are going to say, okay. So if if this this thing is is at, at, attracting the attention of the president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, I'm sure he he can call the likes of. Um, Ay and the other ones who are, you know, sorry to mention the names. So, Emeka, you have to, you have to pipe down. The more you talk, the more you speak to the reporters, the more you make statements to the papers, it will give these people the, the idea that indeed this money is available. So, if, like you said, uh, Emeka, you don't have uh, a, a fund set aside to pay this ransom for these actors, and you want to support the police to do their investigation, then maybe you should pipe low. That's what I feel. But it's unfortunate. It's sad. All right. It's sad that this has happened. Um, I mean, doctors have been kidnapped. Uh, you have priests who are being kidnapped. All these people are kidnapped. For me, I don't think there's an agenda against them. It's just that the kidnappers feel uh, they are profitable. You understand that? Uh, you know, it's it's a good investment to kidnap a priest. As sad as it sounds. And now they've seen actors and actresses. And uh, I hope this will be the last. Really, it's 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 unfortunate. These guys go for people they think will get them the money they want. Occasionally, they kidnap people who may not have, you know, a popularity, you know, but most times they go for people who are popular. Uh, indeed, politicians are also in that category. I, um, I suspect that some of you may not, may not care about me mentioning politicians, that's why I left them out, you know. But anyone who is kidnapped, it's, it's always a sad one. Uh, $100,000 is a lot of money, and $100,000 today in Naira maybe more tomorrow and the next day and next week with the way the economy is going. So we pray, we pray that um, they will be released as soon as possible. You hardly hear of cases of the police successfully securing the release and rescue of uh, kidnapped victims and there's usually a tale of ransom being paid. So it's, it's, it looks bleak, you know, it looks uh, highly unlikely going by the recent past that um, these two will be released or rescued by the police, um, where will their families get the hundred thousand dollars from? Um, please, the Actors Guild of Nigeria and all the actors and actresses, uh, please come together and see what you can do uh, to release them. But on the flip side, if this continues, you know, then of course the kidnapping won't stop. It won't stop because they would feel that ah, if we get them, we can get money. Personally, I have I have um, moderated media programs just like this one where victims, eyewitnesses, members of families of people who have been rescued allege, allege, allege that some security operatives organizations collude with uh, the kidnappers. And that's why there's a sort of, um, you know, you hardly hear of some of these guys rescuing those in captivity because there's money to be made. God help us. That's the size of a top trending uh, segment right here on The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We will uh, be back as we go through the pages of the National Dailies. Up next, stay with us.